We are at SRC, April Hall, 2024, Frisco, Texas. I'm with my friend, Randy Brothers. How the hell are you, man? Dude, Good I'm doing you. great, man. I, I finally made it. I made it to the big show. Yeah. I'm, yes. a, I'm a big timer now. Yes. So I made it on your show. Bro. What's cool is about this being here, like you can't really, I think, appreciate it until you actually see it because with them just watching us, yeah, you know, from a distance like they are, but when you're here like this to really get to experience it and, and enjoy it, you can really appreciate the time, the effort and the energy that it's taken the team to put this thing up. Um, and of course, sir, you get to witness the little hiccups that we have too with going live, raw and uncut. And that's kind of been like our thing. And we've learned that from you, whether you know that or not, we've really? always watched you. You know, because shit, I don't remember when I started watching your show. At least three years ago, it was live. You and um, Nick, Nick, yeah, yeah back, yeah. Nick, yeah, Nicky yeah. P, yeah. So that was like my favorite because your show would be on Tuesdays. Ours was on Wednesdays, but this was before Thursdays. Back then, it might have been on Thursdays because you switched it somewhere in there. But yep. um, we were watching you, and um, it was like you know, it was live. It was raw. It was uncut. People were commenting. Um, somebody from your team or yourself was engaging with the crowd and stuff like that. So we learned like, oh, wow, he's getting a lot of engagement by engaging yeah. with his crowd and stuff like that. And so we've always kind of looked up to like what you did. Like you're definitely the GOAT, the greatest of all times when it comes to the roofing podcaster. You know what I mean? So you, you've you inspired us, whether you know that or not. Wow. I mean, I wouldn't go so far. I'm just a guy who just grabbed a phone and tried a thing, you know? And, yeah. you know, so... You know, looking at this setup, I mean, you're the goat now, bro. Like, I'm just, uh, you know, we, we've been doing it a long time. I think I have like 300 episodes or something yeah. at this point. But uh, it's, I've almost, I, I've gone the other direction. Yeah. Just because it's, it, it's so many things. At some point, you got to kind of pick and choose where you're going to put your time and energy. And, 100%. And we like to create and make sure we stay consistent with our content. But, man, this setup y'all listening or watching this like you got to be here to see this it's it's next level and you guys have done an thank incredible you. job with, with this for sure thank you so much we wanted to bring we saw what you were bringing you know you brought a lot of uh, you know not just inspiration and stuff but the knowledge and the wisdom that you were bringing you know the content you know was is is very relevant like i don't even remember how much stuff that i've learned over the years by listening to you so it was kind of like we wanted to also implement and complement what you were doing and bring something to the roofing industry to to have a good impact lasting impact and get get the messages out whatever the message is or the knowledge that needs to be out there um because you know as well as i do the roofing industry is like 10 years behind the hvac industry yeah um now it's changing rapidly changing here and and, and a lot of it has to do with guys like you early on that was trying to get out there like any new tool that was being implemented by your company personally or something or someone that you knew you know that you could bring on yeah. your show and express what they were getting involved with and how it was going to change our industry and stuff like that so it's kind of like because of guys like you and I that love and are so passionate about our industry, um, you know, that's we're, we're just trying to make an impact and leave it better than it was the way we found it. Absolutely. Well, and for me, getting the the ideas and meeting the people and connecting to, to build up the, you know, the audience or not this, the guest list, this type of event, we're here at SRC mm -hmm. here in Frisco, Texas, like coming to these events is where I connect and meet people and connect with people. And and for me, is always really important that if I'm going to bring some on my show, I want to make sure, you know, they, they they fit that kind of criteria of values and just making sure that they're there to to share and give back to the industry and not take. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can kind of tell if somebody's like just trying to get what they can get just by selling something or coming on here trying to be all salesy. No, it's share the story. And our, our, our show, the premise has always been we want to share the entrepreneurial journey in roofing. It's not just roofers. It's, you know, uh, you know, lead scout or whoever, like right. somebody, other companies, software companies, like manufacturers, like anybody we can get that can share entrepreneurial and entrepreneurial leadership type of advice yes. based on experience. Hey, that brings value to the audience and people like that. And they listen, they watch and, and, and they want more. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the baseline of, of what you're doing now yeah. and what we've been able to do and get started. It's, it's super cool. So. Yeah, it is. It is cool, man. And it's been cool to watch you on your journey. Um, and, and again, I can't say enough, you know, kudos to you for being that trailblazer for us and opening, you know, our eyes to like, hey, this is how we can reach, you know, 
of people in our industry and and then find those that align whether it be our core values or 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 our beliefs right yeah. to bring those people types of people on the show and and how much i've learned by bringing these guests on or coming to exactly events like this like i get more out of interviewing you and just asking five questions right yep. and and mostly i hate to say this out loud but selfishly like i'm asking you them questions because i don't know i yep. need to know, right and i'm sure if i don't know these things our viewers or listeners don't know either and that usually turns into a great conversation with great content and and and, and a a lot of knowledge and experience that yeah. I get to gain and, and so does everybody else. And this is, you know, social social media, you know, it's social commerce. Like this is this is what is making the roofing industry not as big. You know, it's kind of shrinking it down where we can reach more people on such a, you know, in 30 minutes. Yep. You know, and it and it's kind of cool because you know, I, I didn't realize that when we started this, I'll be honest with you, when we started this, um, it was we were trying to figure out a way to um, allow people to know about this uh, charitable event that we were trying to participate in. So we built these gazebos and we were a part of the York Builders Association, which hosts uh, the York County Home and Garden Show. So we go to builder shows. So we built these gazebos. We were auctioning them off. And we we're like, well, how are, we, how are people going to know to come to the home show to, you know, to bid on these gazebos? And somebody uh, made a comment or, or mentioned, well, why don't you do a Facebook Live? Yeah. So, so iPhone 8 out. In front of it, hey, I'm Ty with TC Packer, and we built these gazebos. Come on down, February, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's a silent auction. Come on down. So we did that for about four or five weeks prior to the home show. Went live the entire time we were at the home show. And we realized at that point in time, we're, we were reaching more people outside the home show that were than what was actually attending the home show. So we're like, well, maybe we're on to something. And, and mind you, back then, you could host a watch party. Yeah. So the reach was a and lot that was, easier. That was back when you know, Facebook was really promoting all the lives. So it was like plugging it everywhere. And, yes. And, uh, and and you get a lot of exposure that way. Yes. You know, reach a lot of people. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Definitely. And and it, I think it was more towards like a TC backer. Thing, right. But then the more we started to dig into like the whole podcast thing, that's when I discovered Randy Brothers and the, the Starfield Growth Show. Yeah. I mean, right. And I thought it was like, oh, my God, this dude's like, you know, and, and plus we were running out of content. It was like, dude, I can only talk about shingles so much. I can only talk yeah. about windows so much, gutter, solar. And I was like, oh, my God. So then it went to solar month or gutter month. So four weeks in a row, we would talk about roofing and stuff like that. And it was great. And people were watching, but we didn't even care if people were watching. It was like our little garage man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's Randy Brothers, our rock star up on the, I know I keep like, hopefully I'm not embarrassing you by <laughs> A little bit, man. I'm like, whoa, I didn't realize that. You know what's, you know what's crazy about, about that, though, is we just had an idea and we're like, hey, you know, he, at the time he had a marketing company and, and I was getting my, my, my coaching, you know, the Roofing Academy off the ground. And, and we're like, you know, what, let's just go live and create a little show. And we weren't even a podcast at first. We just went live. And it was in the comments same, same. a couple of weeks in, maybe maybe like five or six episodes in. Someone's like, hey, are you recording this? Is it a podcast? We're like, hey, maybe we should do a podcast. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of happened. Yeah. It was like, let's go live. Let's let's see what happens mm -hmm. and and go from there. So it's really cool to see. And you don't realize, like, it's kind of cool, man, because right now I'm kind of having a moment of, like, realization of, like, the impact that it actually has. Mm -hmm. sure. We've just been doing it for so long. Now it's just part of, we still produce, we still create it. I haven't done the live thing a lot more lately, just selfishly, the, the time, time. And the, yeah. the commitment of setting it all up, dealing with the technical challenges and the time and taking away from my family in the evening yeah. times and every single week being consistent we made a decision to kind of switch. So now we still produce a podcast every single week, but the live thing, I kind of miss it. And I'm kind of like getting the, it's like, maybe we should start that again. Yeah. And you know, what's really funny is I actually, me and Nick just caught up for a beer a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. you know, and just mm -hmm. hung out. Cause we're so, we're so good buddies. Yeah. And, and uh, it was cool to catch up. He's not even in the roofing industry anymore, but he's doing some really cool stuff with what he's doing with right now. And I'm like, we should do like a, an episode, like a, a recap yeah, of, Hey, it's yeah. been, Literally five union. years ago is yeah. when we started this. Wow. Thing, which I, is crazy to think about. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and going back to like, we just recently switched from 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to, to 12 o'clock lunchtime. We're doing like a lunch lunchtime episode yeah. during uh, each week and stuff like that. And it's like when, when you were talking, it's like not only was was myself and the team, but my family was also held hostage 
yeah. basically every single Wednesday night for four straight years. So it was like, and then I'm not fresh either at night, like 7 p.m. after working, you know, all day long. And I, I try to pace myself, but I'm a go getter. So no matter what was going on or whatever challenges, I, I would have to deal with them. But but then to try to bring it every Wednesday night, like you said, being live, you have to remain, you know, that I can't show on my face, even though I know it has probably more than I'd like to admit to shown on my face that I just had a long. Yeah. And that I really in don't the roofing do business, this. you don't have long yeah, days, right. no stress <laughs> and no challenges no, to deal with. Not at business. all. No way. Not at all. Right. Um, yeah. But anyhow, you know, it it but it was like, okay, let's let's switch it up. I mean, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen? Okay, so we might lose, you know, our viewership, but then we've always never made that like how many people were watching you know thank yeah. god we never made it about like we it wasn't about like the dopamine hit we didn't even know what that was back then when we first started this but knowing knowing what we know now thank god that wasn't that wasn't our intentions when we first got started and we still don't chase that dopamine hit i think our intentions have always been been good but i know that i need to be on point with whatever the topic or discussion of the person that we have coming in i don't want this to suck for you yeah. either you know what i mean so yeah. i know i gotta i gotta be on point i gotta you know do my research and and those kinds of things because i want i want the content to go out there because the reason why we're doing this is for those of everybody that's watching and listening it's about them it's not even about us absolutely you know what i mean i don't care how many ums and ahs buts f bombs every now and again i might drop like it's like it it is what it is i am it's who real I am. it's raw and yeah and, and i would i would you know while i got you i i appreciate that you've taken you, you've taken the torch on that because that was at the time I mean, yeah, Facebook Live was like a thing, but we're like, what if we do a live podcast every single week and we get new guests and new people on? And mm -hmm. apparently it worked. It was pretty cool. Yeah. And you guys have kind of taken the torch and yeah. leveled up like 100x, not just 10x. So it's cool. I appreciate you kind of carrying on. And it's like full circle coming back like yeah. years later to be able yeah. to be a guest on your show. Right. Yeah. And, and hopefully you. someone listens it, and gets a little value. Yeah. It's, it's just, that just it's gave cool, me man. goosebumps because it's I hope cool. if anything else, I hope that we inspired you to want to get more creative with it, where you can find it, like get that spark again, yeah. reunite that flame for you to not that you've died out or, or petered out, but I, I understand the grind because unless you've done this, as long as you've done this, the wear and tear that it has on your mind, because we only have so much bandwidth throughout the course of the day or week. Oh, yeah. Right. So to suit up and show up week in and week out like you have done for five years, dude, you're the Iron Man. You're the Iron Man of, of podcasting in the roofing industry. And if you didn't have a, a nickname, like you're you are now the Iron Man. The Iron Man. I'll take it. OK, um, you, you're not self-proclaimed. So we just we gave you the Iron Man. And and, and again, I, I we get that, Yeah. you know, and, and I'll be honest with you. So I can't remember. It was either Deshaun Bryant or David Taggart that actually saved us. Okay, one of them reached out to us. I don't know which order it was because like then two weeks later, the other one came on the show. One of them reached out to us and I was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm kind of digging your podcast. Do you mind if we come on? And it was like, I didn't want to act too excited right away. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, you, we, we think you, yeah, we can probably squeeze you in. Behind the scenes, I was like, thank you, baby Jesus, because I was just out of content, right? We were. We yep. were so out of content. It was like, because now it was just becoming like this grab assy, you know, we were, how much can you talk about? Like we were talking about our team a good bit, which it had yeah. helped strengthen our culture because most of our team watches, you know, our show and stuff like that. And usually when we're launching something new, they find out here first because. <laughs> normally i'll dribble it out you know before. hey we got a new crm coming out in the company <laughs> next week and you're going to be training yeah, uh, that's congratulations right. that's right <laughs> um i'll let something leak out um that way a lot of times and that's how we've also like so we do the 21 turkey salute and that was just because of a conversation that was three of us having i think i asked somebody like what's the guinness book of world records of of turkeys being deep fried simultaneously and it was 20 so being who i am you know all or nothing kind of guy. I was like, all right, well, we're going to beat the Guinness Book of World Record. But there's got to be purpose behind it. I don't want to just go and buy yeah. 21 turkeys and just deep fry them and not know what to do with them. So we were like, well, we're going to feed people. There so, you go. So we went downtown and we actually, I think the first year we did it, we did like 30 some turkeys. The second year we did like 60. And now I think we're up over 80 turkeys. That's awesome. Over 800 people. So it, this this is where this the creativity happens. This is where the magic happens. You know? I love it. Yeah. And I've gotten, you mentioned this earlier and I'll, I'll retouch this a little bit because it applies so much, I think, 
to life and listeners can can take this is I learn more by teaching than I do anything else. Mm-hmm. And, and like interviewing, like when I'm, I'm sit doing, doing my show, I learned so much from my guests. It's like, uh, I can just bring any industry expert I need. We got the platform. I can learn all this stuff and then coaching, Mm -hmm. right? I have a whole coaching platform with with the roofing Academy and I'm constantly learning, constantly learning because every conversation I have, sure. I've got, you know, a lifetime of experience at this point, 20 years of, of, of in the grind, figuring it out, trying to build a great businesses. Yeah. And I can sh- always share, but I, I always find myself learning more than what I'm actually, what, than I, what I feel like I'm actually giving yeah. Yeah. to, to whoever it is, whatever conversation I'm having. And, and it's cool. It's, it's just, it's just, that's what reinforces like why I do what I do, why we do what mm-hmm. we do. Mm-hmm. And, and one thing too, I, I just go off the cuff here. Go and, for it talk about the why behind so much of this is why do a podcast? Why do, you know, I have, you have a very successful roofing company. I have a very successful roofing company. I don't need to do podcasts. I don't need to coach. I don't need to do those things. But the thing is, man, when I got into this business, this industry found me Mm -hmm. in a dark place. Mm -hmm. I was homeless. I was broke, just broke up with my long-term girlfriend. Like I, like nothing really in life was going positive for me. I had, I I was very entrepreneurial spirit. I wanted to make things happen. I, I've always had that. Mm-hmm. But like when I kind of stumbled into this industry, I was in a bad place. Mm-hmm. And this industry has provided an, an incredible life, took me out of that, mm-hmm. got me out of bankruptcy, got me you know, out of homelessness, all the things. And, and it provided an incredible life for me, for my family, and not only for my family, my immediate family, but my mom, my sister, my brother, like everybody, my dad, everybody in my in my immediate family, mm-hmm. plus my extended family, they've all been immersed in this industry, plus friends and people that I've grew up with and the amount of impact that we, I've been able to have yeah. even in a closed circuit it is incredible. So that's like, I feel like I owe it, uh-huh. like, you know, and it's the type of person I am like, this industry has provided so much for me that who knows where I'd be right now if I didn't have this. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm grateful and blessed and more than willing to give back yeah. and do these things because if I can help one other person who was in a place where I was in to then see what happens, the, the ancillary benefits of, you know, the elusive gain that they get from just learning something that you shared or that I shared or, or that a guest or that something we can teach them on a coaching call or something like that. There's no way to really describe the feeling and the gratitude that I get from being able to do that. So it, it's my duty to get yeah, back. And I was that's just that's that why I'm here. Man. Thinking that it's like, it's your moral obligation to Absolutely. get back. What has been, I don't want to say freely given to you, but, but like what you, what would you work for? And, and, and now the pits of hell that this industry has pulled you out of. Yeah. And you feel like you got to give back yeah. um, what, what has been given to you. Right. And, and I, I feel the same way too. That that's been like one of my biggest motivators. And the one thing that you missed and I know, I know, or maybe that's what you meant by your immediate family was your team, the impact that you've yeah. had on your team and the families, their families and their extended families because of your success, right? That you've Absolutely. been able to impact so many other people that, that you're not even on social media saying, hey, talent from the rooftops, like, hey, look at me, the great Randy brothers that I am. You don't have to do that. You've always... You've always presented yourself in a very humble light. I love what you do. Um, the impact that you're having on on your family, your team, you know, all all of the the, the entire roofing industry, right? And and I was just sitting there when I was trying to, I was paying attention to what you're saying. So there's a threefold thing about you when when you're out there coaching and and teaching people, right? So one, you're going to practice what you preach. So one of Absolutely. the one of the learning things that you learn more from from teaching than than the the student right is one you're you're not going to tell them to do something if you're not doing it yourself right two you have to stay one step ahead so basically you got to continuously level yourself up because you got to come up with new stuff right because once the student gets to a certain level right you need to make sure that you they left they're continuously leveling up so you need to level up so it's pushing you whether you know it or not i know you know that but you have to stay ahead of that yeah man Right. And then I can't remember the, the third fold of that, uh, of what I wanted to say, but, but that's one of many things that um, to those two things there that I just mentioned is, is why I think we get so much out of teaching and, and having other people come on our podcast is because we're not going to sit here and just say something live and not actually mirror that when that camera's turned off. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just, yeah. that's not who we are. It's not how no we're way. built. 
You, you know what I mean? So that that and and this it is accountability. You, you know what I mean for us and, and those around us that if we're not doing what we're saying that we're doing, you know, then how can we expect them to to do it if we're not leading by example? Yeah. Well, and I think there's a couple of things as as we probably try to land the plane. We've got a bunch going on in this, in this event oh, yeah. right now. Yeah. But a couple of things there is you know one you said practice what you preach, and for me like it comes up in in, in question like okay you have. You know, you're doing the podcast, you have the, the you know, the, the, the media stuff and the, the roofing academy and the coaching and consulting and all of that stuff and a roofing company. Like, at what point do you pick one or the other? At what point do you mm. just go into coaching and consulting? Yep. And I might be one of the last people in the coaching business that's still holding on because I feel like I stay involved with my roofing company mm. because of ev- it's constantly evolving and constantly changing. Like I'm not done yet. I haven't figured it all out. I don't have it all figured out. We've mm-hmm. seen some really cool things. We've been some major ups, major downs. We've seen so much, but I feel like the industry is constantly changing. And if I'm going to do, you know, this can be a good, I had some good arguments on my show about this specific topic, but I feel in my opinion that I'm going to be the best coach and the best, you know, you have the best answers and guide people the best mm-hmm. when I'm still getting firsthand experience. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as I leave, and at some point, it, who knows? Maybe that'll happen one day. Maybe that's in the cards. But as soon as I'm like, okay, the roofing company is over here. Now I'm going over here. That disconnect starts to happen. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not being super true to like, hey, this happened in my company last week. And now I can share this with you to help you avoid that mistake I made yeah. or, or learn whatever it is. So that's why I stay dedicated to both. And then and the last thing I'll say is like about the show. And one of the things I learned is in all things in business is just be consistent, Mm -hmm. like show up day in and day out, Mm -hmm. show up Mm -hmm. and keep showing up and keep showing up and keep showing up. And and the results will come. I mean, from the roofing side, man, if I showed you like a graph of where we started to where we like skyrocketed, I'm cover of roofing contract magazine, just crushing it. And then four years of no storms for you. And then it's like, okay, we're hovering here. We're trying to figure, figure it out, like mm-hmm. launching new branches and launching new, doing whatever we can to survive and figure things out. And then all of a sudden, you know, it all just clicked again, storms happen and all this and then shot up again. Yeah. Like that's what life looks like. But, it, but the key important. is yeah. show up mm-hmm. every single day and learn and grow and learn and grow and learn and grow. Same thing with the show. It's like, I, I'm like, my, my hair is standing up because it's like five years ago, Every single week, we've produced a, just about every single week for over five years now. We've put out a show. Yep. I don't, and honestly, I don't. I'm with you, I don't know. I don't even know the data. Like, I don't know how many downloads. I know. I think it's good. I mean, yeah. you told me that you it inspired you. So cool. That worked. Yeah. One guy was inspired by our show yeah. for doing it for five years. That's enough for me. Yeah, man. Right on. That's all it takes. That one person that you're impacting. Yeah. Okay. So to circle back a little bit on the um, not giving, letting go yet. Okay. Do you think it's because you don't think you're finished pouring into your team yet? Like you, you feel like you still got a lot to offer yeah. and, and that you don't want to let them down because a lot of those people, if you would yeah. just turn your back now and go into coaching, you'd feel like you'd let them down. Do you think that's why you don't want to let go yet? There is, there is a sense of, that's a sense of like duty and commitment. Like that's my brand, my company. And I recruited a lot of people and they, they you know, and, and they like need leadership. And there's a certain point where I went through, this we're launching tra and it was like a, took a lot of my energy mm-hmm. and i know and, and a year year and a half later i knew i wasn't putting as much in the roofing side mm-hmm. you can see a sense that the, mm-hmm. the things change the culture change like the energy of people change i'm like wait a minute no 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 i gotta figure this out i gotta i gotta pour back into this and make sure that the keep the main thing the main thing mm-hmm. that's my baby that's the the business that's taking care of my life my family everything like i can't and just abandon that because yeah. of this shiny new toy over here right. that doesn't work mm-hmm. like i learned a little bit little hard lessons in there mm-hmm. and now i'm trying to really massage and, and and figure out my time and how i'm able to kind of do things that are in my strength zone but mm-hmm. and incorporate both yeah the media the content is great and but coaching yeah. okay it's not just me coaching clients mm-hmm. but i love that you mentioned that because my role in my business, like I don't have a, I'm not in the day to day all the time. I'm not, right. I don't, I'm not in the office all day. I'm not like out solving leak problems and right. and dealing with, I don't do that anymore. I have an amazing team of people who are better than me. Yet, so I don't have to do that anymore. However, I know my job as the, the face, the founder, the, you know, the leader of the organization, like they still do need that. I mm-hmm. can't just abandon that. So my role as it's shifting is coaching my team yeah. and coaching my clients. 
Yeah. Like that's what I'm passionate about. I love it. I'm getting, I'm trying to pour my, I'm, as when I'm reading books, I'm going to conferences, I'm going to events, getting certifications, like doing whatever I can to, to be the best life coach, business coach yeah. that I can be so I can lift both up. Right. Yeah. So you, I love that you mentioned that because that's my role is, yeah. you know, be the face, create content, like always innovate and vision for both companies, mm -hmm. but coach my team as well as yeah. our clients. And, right. And that's what I love to do. Yeah, no doubt. And, and the reason why I ask that, because I experienced similar, similar situation, right? I, I don't necessarily, I do coach a few people um, on a personal level. I don't have a whole course and, and stuff like, like you do sure. with the Academy and stuff like that. But I do, I do coach some, some other roofing contractors and stuff um, to try to save them a lot of time and energy yeah. and resources and money. But the, the, I started to, 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 pull away from my roofing company and we were traveling a lot and stuff like that, opening up new locations, traveling a lot with, with behind the tool belt. And I noticed that the energy was shifting mm. a little bit and things, things just didn't seem the same when, when I was getting back. Plus I, I my head was somewhere else. I was getting ready for the next traveling event or, or whatever, whatever I had going on at the time. And, uh, but I just noticed things, things weren't the same and I wasn't present. Yeah. Right. And, and so I made I made a, a goal to myself. This was last year, the beginning of 2023. I said to myself, it's like, I know I can't be here and do all the, you know, the things that I wish that I could do because I like to get in the weeds. But when I am here, I need to be present. They need to yeah. know that I'm here. Right. I, and and I, I, I currently read this book now. and It really doesn't have anything to do about it because I interpret things a little bit differently, but it's called The Energy Bust by John Gordon. It's just a short read. You can sit down okay. and read it in one book. And they talk about the CEO creating other CEOs, right? And what a CEO is, is a chief energy officer. So mm -hmm. my job today is, is to create other chief energy officers. Yeah. So when I'm there, I need to be present. Yeah. If, my, if someone needs my team, like my door's always open. If you see yeah. my truck outside, I'm here, my door's open. Like I can't keep that door shut. Like I'm so guilty of because I'll get inundated. I'll inundate myself with all these shiny things that aren't even really relevant at times to, to the vehicle that actually, that gave me the opportunity to, to get involved with those shiny things. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't let this thing shrivel up and die over here. You know what I mean? And we got awesome people like everyone that you see that, that that's here helping us. The podcast isn't their full-time job. TC backers actually their full-time job. And I've made this a part-time job for them, yeah. but, but Vic gravitated towards us. He's a wonderful musician. We hired him to be our, our costing manager. Yeah. Well, he showed interest about three years ago in the podcast. And now he's like, I made a name up for him. He's like my chief. I don't even know an engineer, AV engineer or some shit like that. But, but, um, but it, it, it it's created opportunities not to get off track, but like, I don't want this to be a distraction of those people that, that has been, that then been following me. these yeah. people have been following me for some of them over a decade. And yeah. here I'm out gallivanting and doing all these things. And not that the people that, that replaced me in those positions aren't good at what they do, but like, I'm the guy that brings the heat. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm the one that sold them on that dream, that vision. Right. Yeah. And it's hard to follow somebody, you know, a manager's vision when it's like, well, I, I want your job. No. You know what I mean? But, but when I, when, when I show up and I bring the heat, that just rekindles that fire. For them. That's why they're here. That's the guy that I wanted to come work for, you know, yeah. and I don't ever want to lose that and that, that right, wrong or indifferent. And maybe I'm thinking too small minded and I, somebody should replace me someday. And, and I'm sure somebody will. And that, and that's my plan someday to have somebody replace me. But until that, I'm going to be the chief energy officer. When yeah. I'm there, I'm going to be present. Yeah. There are times that I can't be there, even though I'm there. Right. But, but when I'm there and I have that bandwidth, I need to be there and there, and my presence needs to be known, not in a negative way, but yeah. bringing that energy, bringing that heat when I'm there. And what, what was the second part to that? Well, the, the vision side. Yeah. And, and it's, and I've gone through this too, as I'm trying to, you know, as I've grown my business, like I, you know, I, I'm a believer in, in entrepreneurship of a rule that, you know, if you want to be successful, replace yourself. Mm -hmm. Find people better than you yes. and, and work yourself out of all the I've done all the jobs and yes. I've worked myself out of all the jobs. Right. You get to a certain level, you're like, uh, now what? Yeah. But through that journey, you should really press in and understand who you are and who what what makes you tick and what your strength mm -hmm. zone is. Mm -hmm. Like what you're we all have a superpower, right? And and one of my superpowers is connecting with people and and being able to kind of like be that energy officer and being the vision of the company and and connecting people and bringing people into things. So I just try to do that all the time. 
I like that. Right. Yep. And, and, and I think I've gone, I, in this journey, I went through a point where I'm like, kind of start to lose your identity and identity. Too, that. Been there, like, did oh that gosh, now what, years what do ago. I do? And, yep. and now I've, and maybe I've even devalued myself as a visionary for the company. Mm-hmm. And luckily I have some great mentors in my life that really kind of poured into me. It's like, dude, get that out of your head. Because I, I felt like almost devalued my own company mm-hmm. because I replaced myself with people who were better at the job than I was at the job. Have you ever and found then, yourself trying to get caught up like to like new technology that they may have implemented? And you feel some kind of way, like, I don't even know how to use that gadget. Or have you ever never got that disconnected? So you're guilty as charged, man. Like, <laughs> you do not want me um, trying to operate a lot of our technology. Yeah. Like, I could get in there and fumble around and look at reports and do enough to yeah. be dangerous. Yes. But uh, no. You ever I, beat I, yourself up by not mastering that like you did early on? No, for a short period of time. But no, I think I've, I've really understood that the concept like that's not my job okay and, and to be a high level entrepreneur i have to find people to execute all the things i don't have to know every little thing about everything mm-hmm. because that becomes and i'm a control guy i like control but mm-hmm. i've had to learn that if i'm gonna have to know everything about everything and control things it's gonna limit me it's gonna limit my company it's mm-hmm. gonna limit them mm-hmm. So I've had to learn to like, I, I get calls. I got a call, we, working with guys over here on a big job, like national claims advisors, right? And a big job. And he's like, oh yeah, that, the funds just got released on that big yada, yada horse barn thing. We're doing like a half million dollar job. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I think they were rolling panels a couple of weeks ago, but I, I don't know. There was a point in my life. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know. But now I'm like, you were doing like 10 jobs a day. Yeah all over the place. I don't, whether it's service or solar or right. commercial, or like, I can't have your finger if, on the ball. If, all my, that. if I knew about all those jobs, our company would be in trouble. Yeah. But I have great leadership and great structure in place mm-hmm. to where I know what I need to know enough. And when things are difficult and I got to help solve problems, great. I'm there, but I've empowered my team to execute. And I just run leadership team meetings and, and run it, try to run the thing like a CEO and not, yeah. You know, like someone who's running around in the weeds acting like a CEO, yeah. you know? So yes, it's been a transition, but yes. it's when, it's when would you say be. that happened? Was there just like one day you were like, okay, I give up. I can't figure it out. Or was it like a slow transition? And, and how far back was that? So, you know, some of my background of, mm-hmm. I did it all myself mm-hmm. at first, right? Mm-hmm. I was doing the books, writing the checks, That's why I'm the asking hammer, this. Yes. doing all the things. Uh, same thing. Okay. Same thing. Yep. I did. I was doing all the things. Yes. I lost it all. I went bankrupt, literally bankrupt, filed, mm-hmm. wrote it. Like it was a really tough time in my life. Mm-hmm. And the biggest thing I learned out of that is like, if you really want to be successful, you can't do that. You mm-hmm. can't do be the be all end all of your company. Mm-hmm. And from that moment, I knew that if I'm going to rebuild, my objective from day one was always to be an entrepreneur, not a business runner, not a, not a manager, not a like I've never, I, I talk to my staff, whatever. I'm like, I, I claim this, like I'm a visionary, not a manager. It's not my thing. Right. I hire great managers because that's their job is to manage. My job is to be vision mm-hmm. and to make sure that this company has a great reputation and great brand and that, that we put the right people in the right seats that I, that I hire great people from top to bottom. That's my thing, right? Not the day to day in the, in, in the weeds. It's so I learned that after that failure, yeah. my mission from then on was to not get so attached to every little thing because I knew what kind of limit it, what kind of limits that would put on myself and on my business. Yeah. And, uh, and we've been, we've been able to execute from there. Yeah. And, and that, and you said, you talked about limits there and it's like, not only do you suffer, but your family suffers too, when you're trying to be the chief everything officer. Yeah. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Ben there did that. I, my moment came about nine years ago, probably a little further back. My mom lived with us. She moved in with us. She was diagnosed with cancer for her second bout with it. And uh, we were out to dinner one night. It was me, my wife, and my mom. And my phone rang about yeah. seven thirty at night, and everything came through this. I yeah. mean, everything, every lead, every phone call, every email, every text message, everything came through it. And I just couldn't take it. I red buttoned it, and I never did because I thought, you know, this is how I feed my family. Every time that phone rings, like I need to answer. I there's need value to, to yeah. that. Yeah. Right? Every time I touch this phone, there's a value attached to it because yeah. I'm the person in control. It. Right. Right. And my, my poor mom and I was beating myself up because, you know, Jana was watching, taking care of my mom all day long. And, and I was beating myself up for not being present, right? You know, e- emotionally yeah. present. Even when I was there, I wasn't there. So I was, I was kicking the crap out of myself and, and I felt bad. And, and my mom was sitting there and she looked at me and, and she said something and it's not very profound. And we've heard it 
two two things she said to me, but for whatever reason in that moment, it hit differently. Okay. And mind you, my mom was about what she was she was dying basically of cancer. And and she said, Tyrus, she said, Life is too short. We've heard that. Yeah. My whole life. But in that moment, it's given me goosebumps. Yeah. Man. Dude, like she's like, life is entirely too short. And she she's been an entrepreneur her whole life. Bar restaurant industry. I, that's what I grew up in. And my dad was a mechanical engineer, but yeah. a wonderful, wonderful carpenter. And, and my 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 uncles, his brothers, and, and my grandfather's um, great grandfather are all good, wonderful carpenters. This is where I got my skills from. And um, so she said that, and then she said, You need you need help. We need to find someone to help you. So at that moment, it was over nine years ago. I went on a mission to, to, to find people. And this is what was crazy. We had already had people in our organization. The problem was, is I taught them, I taught them not how to think, but what to think, mm -hmm. right? Like they were yeah. waiting for me for all the answers, yep. Yep. you know? And, and uh, so my mind shifted at that moment. It was like, I need help, but my, my family's suffering. I'm, I'm kicking the shit. I can't, I can't even spend an hour with my mom at, at Texas Roadhouse or work, whatever, wherever we were, Longhorn Steakhouse is where we were up in Mechanicburg, Pennsylvania. And um, so I went on a mission. It wasn't easy for me to start finding people, you know, to surround myself with people. But somebody said something to me, and I know I'm going to say this wrong, but it, they said, if I could find somebody that could do what I was doing 70% as well as I could do it at 100%, they're going to be doing it 100% better than how you're doing it now. OK, yep. because everything that I'm doing, I'm mediocre. at. Yep. I cannot excel at anything. I'm bogged down. Yep. So out of those 15 tasks, and this is no exaggeration, there was 15 tasks that I was doing, created 12 full time, 40 hour a week plus jobs for 12 individuals yeah. out of the 15 things that I was doing on a daily basis, ordering materials, doing the takeoff, selling jobs. I was even doing repairs still yeah. at that point in time. Right. Like yeah. I'm doing everything. I had a service department. I had um, accounts payable. I had account receivables, but there was not one thing. I still, to this day, the one thing I won't let go with. Now, most people do ACH, but I sign every check that's printed. Yeah. I just, out of respect, I don't care if it's going to distribution, manufacturing, a subcontractor, an employee that doesn't have ACH. I still sign every can sign, not stamp. I have a stamp in case I am out of town like I am right now. The accountant's got the stamp. Yeah, yeah. But it's locked. I got one too. It's locked. Yeah. <laughs> locked in the safe. You, you know what I mean? But but and I just find that's a respect thing. Like, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your, you know, thank you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At least I can do. It. But um, but I went on a mission to surround myself around people that were smarter than me in yeah. on in areas that I shouldn't even be messing with. Like I don't know anything about a website. Could I figure it out? Yeah, I could build a website, but I don't have four, six, eight months to figure it out. Yeah. Hire a professional. Yeah. Hire someone that knows SEO. Hire someone. I just had a great podcast with, with Beanie about AI and SEOs. Great. Yeah. Cool. Love it. I'll get on the horn and make sure my team's already out in front of this because that's my job to make sure that we're flowing in the right direction, making sure. Like, I loved how you said making sure the marketing, the branding, you know, the brand is still being represented the way the brand was built. That's you. You're yeah. TC. That's your company. Right. That's your brand. Like you can't, you have to own that. We have to own that. Yeah. Right? That's, that's part of what we have to. And whether we realize it or not, it mm -hmm. is our brand and, and our values, whether they're written or not, they're, they're there. And yeah. it's a direct extension of us yes. as the founder of the, of, of the, as the visionary of the business. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, if we're not intentional about the, what the narrative is of that brand and what the messaging is and mm -hmm. what that brand represents, mm -hmm. guess what happens? The narrative gets filled in for you and other people's narratives are not ours and then we lose total control there so that's the one thing where it's my it's my baby it's my brand and i will always be there to support that and and, and own that i love that i love that i love that i think this is a good good place for us to wrap up man but this dude what what an amazing conversation uh, i'm so grateful. cool man. yeah i'm grateful for for you i'm grateful for everything you've done for our industry um let's let's do something together i don't know what like i don't whatever let's figure something out i'm let's, with let's, you brother let's, yeah we'll get you on our show too yeah yeah and uh and let's do it man congrats this thank you, you guys hey you can't see you see like no this setup is legit is as good as it gets man super professional thank you um i got work to do myself man. hey any questions man? I gotta level Don't it up dude <laughs> thank you so much appreciate you man yep, thank, thank you. you thank you guys for tuning in we will see you on the next round